for this game for almost a full year. Let's go to Jeff Grayson. Yes, we, we get calls a lot asking for the consolation scores because you don't see those teams on television after they're out of the, the championship brackets. We want to tell you that Ricori defeated St. Thomas Academy 74-72, and they'll face Eden Prairie in the consolation championship. The Eagles defeated JWP by a score of 66-51. So it'll be Ricori against Eden Prairie tomorrow at 4 for the consolation championship. Hope that helps fans of those schools. Back to you, Dick. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. We try to be uh, diligent and to uh, give those scores, but uh, we've neglected to tonight. And by the way, you can forgive Mike Manning if he wants to give up coaching because he got beaten on a buzzer beater, a three-point basket in the consolation bracket again this afternoon. Back-to-back -back heartbreaking losses for St. Thomas Academy. We're not suggesting that, Mike. You're a great <laughs> coach, but uh, we can understand your frustration. 30 seconds left in this first semifinal game. Wow, that's tough. Even down by 20. Lynn Peterson leaves his starters in the game. I do not believe he substituted the entire game. Zuka sometimes comes off the bench. Rob Oldtime. You know, we saw the St. Thomas Academy team leaving after the game last night, and they just looked totally drained. And it looked like they were just emotionally spent. They almost had trouble getting up the stairs to get out of here. And I think North kind of has that effect on people. They just take it to you, and they're certainly losing on a last second shot. It's even more difficult. Nice touch here for Lynn Peterson. Jim Goff, one of the few seniors on the team, getting into the game, replacing Dan Ope, uh, Dan Addison. One of two for Jason Spellman. Yeah, they tried to get Goff the ball, but the pass tipped away. North takes another step toward back-to-back -back Sweet 16 championship. It's a convincing 62, 41 win over Staples Motley. Close game. Got up into the 80s. New London Spicer, of course, knocked off by Minnehaha Academy, a team that we will see later tonight in our next game against Fertile Beltrani. Hey, nice touch. Thank you. Congratulations. Colin Elamine making a point to come over here and apologize in person for what happened after the game. And uh, that tells you a lot more about that young man than uh, I think you saw after the game yesterday, things kind of uh, slipped away emotionally for uh, El Amin and his team, and a nice touch there. We, we do appreciate that. Let's go to Jeff Grayson. All right, thanks to Golan Collin, and I'm with Jabbar Washington. Guys, you're playing for the championship again. Congratulations on the win, first of all. I think, Collin, let's start with you from a health standpoint. How are you feeling? You, you really got tagged. I got banged up, my nose and my lip, but right now I'm feeling all right. I just got a wreck, ice, and I'll be all right for tomorrow. Jabbar, I want to ask you relating to that. You got one of your best player on the bench, start of the fourth quarter, and you guys increased the lead. What did that say about you guys? Uh, that shows uh, how much talent we got and how, how much teamwork we have. Everybody stepped up in the fourth quarter when he was out, and he was there, back there cheering us on the louder. What did this game mean to you guys, uh, call it after last year? I mean, they played you guys to the final gun, and here we go again in the semis to beat them like that. It means a lot to us. We knew they were going to come out hard trying to play aggressive with us. Um, but God bless us, we're just a better team tonight. What does this mean to be back here? You're on the threshold of a repeat. 
it means a lot, it means a lot to us, to the North community, Northside community. It just means a lot to everybody who's a part of it. What was it for, like for you, watching from the bench, watching your guys come through the way they did? Um, I liked it, but I, I enjoyed it, but I, I don't think I can get used to that. <laughs> Jabbar, coming off the game yesterday, what was that like? After such an emotional game, winning it at the buzzer with your friend right here. What was it like to come back? What were you guys like emotionally? Hey, I got to say, this is the greatest point guard anywhere. I'll take him over anybody. And, uh, I mean, the, the team put us in that position for him to, for him to win it for. And, hey, it was just great. It took a lot out of us. And the coaches just made sure that we got a lot of rest so we can be ready tomorrow. You guys obviously have played in your share of big games. You seem to thrive on those. Yeah, we do. I mean, we got big time players. I mean, ain't no chokers out here. We, we big time, like big by child. Khaled, any final words before I let you celebrate this one? You just, uh, no, not really. Say what's up to the north side. What's up with y'all? Let's go. All right, well, send it back to Dick. Minneapolis North going for the repeat. Back to you. And they may indeed go back to back. Minneapolis North with a convincing win over Staples Motley. The Polars will face either Fertile Beltrami or Minnehaha Academy. That game will get started in about 25 minutes. Attention! This season's sun-kissed oranges are especially juicy and delicious, which may cause intense cravings for even more. Prepare yourself for a mouth-watering experience with plenty of vitamin C. Get sun-kissed oranges now at your local supermarket. You've got a big game to watch. You've got a big crowd to feed. And you've only got one bag of chips. Chips. Which is why Super America helps out in more ways than you can imagine. With row after row of munchies. Sandwiches that satisfy the hungriest crowd. And high-performance gasoline like Super America's 92 octane with Injector Guard Plus. Super America. When it comes to making you look super, we never stop. Being a parent means getting the most for your money. Introducing the 96 Illumina. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty, and now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything, so you don't have to. The 1996 Illumina, a car your family can trust. Test drive one today at your Heartland Chevrolet to your dealers. Karen Yeager's a First Bank customer, not just because she can transfer funds by phone through Fastline, or use her Checkster card instead of writing checks, or get an account summary from the Fast Bank ATM machine. Karen's a loyal customer because only First Bank puts so many ways of handling her family's money right at her fingertips. Experts advise eating five servings of fruits and vegetables every day for better health. We advise including more sun-kissed oranges. They help you meet your goal of five a day and make your mouth very, very happy. Get some now. Welcome back to the St. Paul Civic Center, Minneapolis North. With a convincing win over Staples Motley, they're in the championship again. And if they win the championship, when we have this... Uh, historical perspective 20 years from now maybe when the high school league looks back on the sweet 16 format and wants to do it again they'll look back in the mid 90s and say hmm sweet 16 minneapolis north minneapolis north but they've got one more game to go fertile beltrami against minnehaha academy and the winner of that game will take on minneapolis north tomorrow but of the three north wins this may have been the most convincing win the best win uh, because they had control of this game from the outset they really did, and they showed uh, a lot of different weapons, a lot of different looks, and that's what really makes it hard for anybody who tries to play them, their opponents. How do you beat North? That's the question. How do you stop Khaled El, El Amin? Nobody knows the answer to that question. Unless somebody can figure that out before tomorrow, uh, it's all over. The big hope for whoever plays North is that they miss their shots. Well, they didn't miss their shots. In fact, Ozzie Lockhart did not miss a shot in the first half. He had a tremendous first half. Six field goals, six for six for the uh, from the field, including a three-point basket, and he is our American Dairy Association player of the game. He'll receive a certificate and a donation sent to Minneapolis North on behalf of Ozzy Lockhart from your local dairy farmers who ask, got milk? The Polar shot 64% from the field in the first half, 
and then had a big run in the fourth quarter with Khaled El Amin out of the ball game. Very impressive performance, and for those of us who think North might be a better team this year than last year, I don't think they did anything in this game against Staples Motley to, dis to dispel that notion. That's right, and obviously offensively they've got so many weapons, but defensively I think that's where they cause most teams their problems. Ozzie Lockhart, player of the game, had an outstanding defensive performance tonight as well. And you can handle the defensive pressure maybe for a quarter, two, or three, but eventually it seems like it always breaks a team. Mm -hmm. And in tonight's case, they didn't have to wait till the fourth quarter. Staples Motley with ten first-half turnovers, and it really cost them as the Polars rolled to an easy win. We've got Fertile Beltrami and Minnehaha Academy getting started in oh, about 20 minutes or so. We'll take a break, have a news update, and be back with more from the Civic Center in a moment. <laughs> for 48 months, very little time, on Protégé, and a thousand back, B2300 SE, and a thousand back, 626, and a thousand back, Miata, 4.8 for 48 months, ends April 1st, this is a Minnesota 9 news update. Good evening, I'm Robin Robinson. A majority voted to expel him, but Representative Jeff Bertram still gets to keep his job. Today's vote at the Capitol was 68 to 65 in favor of kicking out the Bainesville DFLer, but that was 22 votes short of the two-thirds needed to expel a member from the House. Many Republicans abstained from a second vote, ordering Bertram to apologize. At times, I've said things to people and about people that I now regret to anyone who has been offended by my actions or remarks. I'm very, very sorry. Bertram admitted spreading I false rumors and pressuring a store owner to drop shoplifting charges against his brother Joe. Life. The House continues to debate appropriate punishment. Learned. A plane crash in Duluth has killed a former space shuttle pilot. Colonel Robert Overmeyer died when a small plane went down near Duluth International Airport. The 60-year-old was conducting test maneuvers on a prototype plane for Cirrus Design Corporation. The FAA has sealed off the crash site until they find the plane's test recorder. Overmeyer commanded the last successful flight of the space shuttle Challenger. A 33-year-old Chaska man is dead after a fire destroyed his mobile home. Flames broke out around 4.30 this morning. A neighbor reported the blaze, but when firefighters arrived, flames and falling debris prevented them from rescuing the man. The victim's wife and daughter said he was in a bedroom at the back of the mobile home. A state fire marshal is currently investigating. Minneapolis police are still searching for the man who raped a woman last Sunday in a downtown parking ramp. Meanwhile, security measures have been beefed up at the LaSalle Court ramp where the rape took place. Off-duty officers are on patrol, and starting this weekend, there will be security guards in the elevators to protect women. When people enter the ramp, we will ask what floor they are going. The only people that will be allowed up into the ramp will be people who have cars in the ramp. LaSalle Ramp is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. Authorities have released a 31-year-old man they were holding in the death of a St. Paul woman. Prosecutors did not file charges against the suspect who was arrested on Wednesday for the murder of Susan Bauer. Investigators say Bauer was strangled. Bauer's estranged husband found her body when he went to drop off clothing for their three young children. He's not a suspect. Police are still investigating the case. They say the only thing missing from the home is a push-button phone. St. Paul police are turning from Minnesota Vice to sell Minnesota Nice to tourists. Chief Corky Finney fielded questions from the Japanese media, who will take home true stories about crime in the heartland, not exaggerations about American violence. The reason for the Goodwill meeting, fear of becoming a victim, is scaring international tourists away from big cities in the U.S., and that could mean losing a lot of money. We know that international tourists um, outspend domestic tourists by about 10 times. 
The reporters are guests of a Midwest tourism organization. If they write positive stories about Minnesota, it could mean millions in additional tourism dollars. The tiny town of Wyoiga, Wisconsin is coming back to life. After three weeks, hundreds of Wyoiga residents are returning to their homes. They were evacuated 18 days ago when a train carrying liquid propane ran off the tracks. It's taken this long for safety crews to burn off the fuel and clean up the derailment. Wisconsin Central Railroad promises to pay for expenses and damages brought on by the ordeal. Up next, Spike Lee spices up a Nashville insurance business. How? 1-800-GIRL-6. We'll explain coming up. There are bounties in life you couldn't begin to measure and yields that take a generation to know. For that other crop coming up, there's Basis Post-Emergence Herbicide. Basis is one past control of the grasses and broadleaf weeds that worry you most for about $12 an acre, half the cost of most pre-programs. Basis, because life's a harvest and corn isn't all you're raising. Throughout history, Ford F-Series has set the standard for quality that stands out, for strength that stands apart, with the 96 F-150 215 360, for value that stands alone, with savings of over $2,200. Lease the 96 F-150 for 209 a month with 10% off. We carry those strengths into the future with the 97 F-150. Ford F-Series, strength after strength after strength, for trucks that stand the test of time. See your Northland Ford dealer. Hi there, I'm Jack Prescott, one of the busiest bankruptcy lawyers in Minnesota. I can take the fear and the worry out of your bankruptcy. I've filed over 20,000 cases. This is all I do, and I do it well. Call me today, Jack Prescott. Automatic Garage Door and Fireplace is Minnesota's largest garage door company, featuring LiftMaster garage door openers. Powerful, super quiet, and loaded with safety features. Now on sale at Automatic Garage Door and Fireplace. Introducing same-day dentures. From only $190, you can have dentures custom-made for you the same day. Our own dentist and on-site lab saves you time and money. Now that's something to smile about. Same-day dentures. Don't go to a superstore to buy an Apple Macintosh. Go to the Apple Specialists, Team Electronics. You'll find a wider selection, competitive prices, and... Service and support. That's the team difference. Those pesky paparazzi will probably be on their P's and Q's around actor Alec Baldwin from now on. We, the jury, the above entitled cause, find the defendant, Alexander Baldwin, not guilty of the offense charged to it, violation of Section 2. A jury found Baldwin not guilty of assault and battery for a scuffle with a photographer outside his home last year. The shooter says Baldwin broke his nose when he tried to take a picture of Kim Basinger bringing the couple's newborn home from the hospital. He said it was innocent. The jury didn't buy it. A Nashville businessman is getting lots of phone calls, but he's not happy about it, and he blames movie master Spike Lee. Mike Hassel's toll-free number coincidentally spells out Girl 6, the name of Lee's newest film. The movie is about phone sex. But Hassel is an insurance broker, and you can bet the calls he's getting are not asking about premiums. Hassel says he will not change the number for fear of losing his real client. Well, uh, Joe is here now. I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, I mean, how do you make a transition from that? It's really kind of difficult. I don't know. So, you caught me on that Joe. one. Yeah, well, it looks like we're going to dodge a bit of a bullet here <laughs> as far as the storm goes later this weekend. Some winter storm watches up across the western part of the state. We're going to see some snow, but... I don't think it's going to total up bit. into the six inch or more amount. Yeah, we okay. could see an inch or two. So here's what we're looking at as far as temperatures across the region right now. 32 degrees here in the Twin Cities. 32 also out into Redwood Falls, up toward Alexandria, the cool spot, Thief River Falls. They're checking in right now at 17 degrees, 20s from International Falls down through Hibbing over toward Duluth is what we're looking at right now. As far as that winter storm watch that I was talking about, here's how it's shaping up. It's for the west central and northwestern parts of the state starting with tomorrow night and on into Sunday. So as you get up toward Morris, Alexandria, back up through Park Rapids, up toward Baudette, that's where we have the possibility of seeing anywhere from six, maybe even up to 10 inches of snow falling in some of those areas. And it's gonna be blowing around pretty good. So some whiteout conditions are a possibility into Sunday. Now we get off a little bit farther to the east, we're looking at some rain mixing with some snow at times as we get forward tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, maybe even the rumble of some thunder, then eventually changing over to all snow late Sunday and on into the day on Monday. But it looks like our amounts will be a lot lighter here across the metro versus 
almost dropped it off to the west. Here's what we're looking at for our forecast now tonight. Some clouds moving in here toward daybreak, 20 to 25 degrees for the low temperature there. And now let's take a look at tomorrow. Mostly cloudy skies, chance of some rain or snow in the afternoon, and a high temperature of 35 to 40 degrees. So traveling westward this weekend, definitely take care. If you can change your plans, that would be a good idea. Don't want to go to western Minnesota or the Dakotas. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Yeah. Well, it was off to the races at Brookdale Center. Yes, yes. Oh. Athletes of the future got on all fours to compete for fame and prizes. Early Childhood Family Education sponsored the Kids Crawl, which celebrates community outreach programs. Children 6 to 18 months were invited. Some babies got a little sidetracked by our cameras, but others did come to their rescue. Nobody told the kids to use his legs, so he didn't walk. But who said you had to crawl? If your baby missed today's action, the kids' crawl continues tomorrow at 11. Some future athletes there, yeah. track and field stars. Yeah. We got basketball. If you're not a big high school basketball fan, we do have college basketball. Rick Pitino's Kentucky Wildcats, they will face second-seeded Wake Forest in the Midwest Regional Final tomorrow. That's at the Metrodome. Today, the media asked Pitino what he thought of the opponent, and Pitino said it really doesn't matter what he thinks. You know, we, we tell you certain things, and then you write what you want anyway. I mean, I, I know my, the media in Lexington and Louisville, they're, they're, they're great. They ask me what I think of the other team. I give a scouting report, and then they tell me how I'm wrong the next day, and that I take it too serious. So, so they, they don't, you don't listen to me anyway about the scouting reports I give you. You just, you just like to play coach anyway. So I, I think uh, I would rather just read you and get your insight. Rick Pitino, absolutely correct. Kirby Puckett, three for three today, three RBI for the Twins. His performance helps beat Baltimore. Four to two in Fort Myers. Paul Molitor also two for three in spring training action. Finally, free agent linebacker Broderick Thomas signs today with the Dallas Cowboys. Thomas cut by the Vikings in the offseason after being charged with drunken driving and illegal possession of a handgun. Thomas will replace Dixon Edwards, who was signed by the Vikings to replace Thomas. Get that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. He's just switching no. things around. Timberwolves lead Dallas in the third quarter. We'll have highlights after. That's Our some good time. news. Yeah. That's some good news for the Timberwolves. They yeah. need to get some good... point of the year yet these two teams have been very highly regarded all year long and it should be a great game in uh, talking with Mike Manning before the game said any changes he goes no want to play the same way just hopes that Matthew Lee gets off to a little bit better start from the field and from the free throw line and uh, it should be a very interesting matchup and of course if North wins I'm sure you talked about it in the first game we'll have the rematch of the championship game last year in the Sweet 16 format, North against Staples Motley. And I know everyone from Staples Motley would relish the opportunity to play North again, but that's, that's tomorrow. That's a long ways down the road. And as my grandma used to say, be careful what you wish for, but... It might come true, right. <laughs> but you're right. That would be a great matchup. But we've learned from watching the hockey tournament and last week some surprises with the girls' basketball. Who knows what's going to happen whenever I've looked ahead something there's been a surprise we'll have to see if st thomas academy their dedication desire and dream on their shirts if that comes true today because like you said they've got an incredible task ahead of them the polars return to the floor here at the civic center a very convincing win over rochester mayo last night 73 to 53 four polars in double figures and we talked about the success that Carrick Taylor and Jabbar Washington had shooting from the field a combined 17 for 18 from the field. That gives you some idea about how North was able to get the ball inside to those two players. Let's get the introductions from Richard Stanford. Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the St. Paul Civic Center and to the quarterfinals of the Sweet 16 of the 1996 Minnesota State High School boys basketball tournament today's second quarter final match the champions of section 3 AA with a record of 26 and 2 the st. Thomas Academy cadets and the 
champions of Section 5AA with a record of 23 and 1, the defending state champions, the Polars from Minneapolis North. And now here are your starting lineups. For St. Thomas Academy, at forward, six foot three inch junior, number 25, Ross Iverson. <laughs> for North, at forward, six foot two inch junior, number 44, Jabbar Washington. For the cadets, at forward, six foot eight inch senior, number 31, Matthew Lee. <laughs> For the Polars, at forward, six foot one inch senior, Kayvon Westbury. <laughs> For St. Thomas Academy at center, six foot seven inch senior, number 33, Javier at center for North, six foot four inch sophomore, number 52, Carrick Taylor. For the cadets at guard, six foot four inch senior, number five, Chris Rye. Junior, number 24, Ozzy Lockhart. For St. Thomas Academy at guard, six foot three inch junior, number 41, Paul Kanizel. At guard for North, five foot ten inch junior, number 42, Khalid El Amin. The head coach of the cadets is Michael Manning. Head coach of the Pullers, Robin Ingram. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your officials for this game are Carl Britt and Jeff Coombe. And now for the reading of the sportsmanship code from the St. Thomas Academy cadets, meet Kevin Berry. From the North Pullers, meet Alvarez McKendall. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Minnesota State High School League State Basketball Tournament. We appreciate your attendance at this tournament and hope you enjoy it. The State Basketball Tournament is being played under the rules of the Minnesota State High School League. These rules provide for fair play and good sportsmanship among players and coaches. As athletes, we ask the spectators to promote the ideals of good sportsmanship, fair play, and respect for our opponents and the cause of the officials. Thank you, gentlemen. Today's national colors are being presented by the St. Thomas Academy Color Guard under the command of Cadet Master Sergeant David O'Day and Cadet Staff Sergeant Nielsen. The St. Thomas Color Guard are the current champions of the Upper Midwest JROTC region. Please remain standing as the St. Thomas Academy Band plays our national anthem under the direction of Mr. Clayton Brown.
semifinal game tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Of course, we've got two more games coming up later tonight. Those winners will face off in the other semifinal bracket, the second game tomorrow night. Here are a couple of the key players for you. Colin Elamine does such a great job offensively and defensively for North, forcing a lot of turnovers. And Matthew Lee, who will be the biggest man on the floor in this game at 6'8". On his way to Bradley next year, a lot of talent out there for this one, Dick. Should be fun. And it'll be Lee up against Jabbar Washington. That's controlled by Lee. He's got a six-inch height advantage, but Washington makes up for a lot of that with his great leaping ability. Collins and Lee is off to a good start. Going right inside, no hesitation, no dribbles either, right inside. First four points for the cadets. Elamine for three. Washington hustling to the corner. Can't get the rebound. Rye eating it inside. Two misses for North. Taylor with a miss. Washington with a follow-up for two. Gary Taylor went the whole night last night without missing, and he missed a couple of tries there. Iverson lost it in the lane. Picked up by Knizel. And there's a reach-in foul on Ozzy Lockhart. Cadets had the ball. They made the rebound. They got to put that ball away. Quick hands of North are going to knock it away. Got to put that ball away. Lockhart last night wore number 30. Today he'll wear his typical number 24. Inbounded to Lee, and he's got six early points. You go with what works. Might have had a restless night's sleep last night waiting for this game. And a rebound on the defensive end of the floor. Through the hands of Iverson, and it goes out of bounds to Minneapolis North. Now, I'm curious to see when the cadets run how effective they are because they're so good in the half court set. Even though they had a bust out there, North is so quick getting back. I wonder if it's better to hold it up a little bit. It's one of the things that was so impressive about North in last night's game against Mayo. They got from one end of the floor to mid court so quickly. Their transition game is so quick. This is Lockhart. In his first two threes last night, he misses his first one this afternoon. Underneath, nice pass from Rye to Knizel. And the Cadets lead by three. Good use of the left hand. His shot wasn't getting blocked. Elamine leans and misses. Rebounded by Lee. Elamine stripped it free in the come free to Westbury. Taylor and it hit the bottom of the rim. Shot might have been blocked on the way in, but he stays with it. And Derek Taylor gets his first two points. Four different North players have scored field goals already in the game. Already, we could have to give him in a couple of possessions, though. Lee's unstoppable. Washington had to foul him to stop him. First foul on Washington and the Polars. Certainly, this is one of the questions for the Polars, how to stop them. And like you said, right now they can't. Matthew Lee to the line is Mike Manning talk strategy. Check that. It's the second Polar foul. Lockhart picked the foul up a moment ago. Lee really struggled from the free throw line in yesterday's game. He missed five free throws in a row, made one, then missed another one. Misses two here. Tough assignment for Kanaisa. Guarding Khaled Elamine. Elamine for 15. Five points for Khaled Elamine. Kanaisa did a good job. He was right there, right on him. Lee tried to get it inside to Javier Khaled. The pass tipped away and stolen. Elamine for two. Derek Taylor keeps the ball alive. Now Lockhart for three. Ozzy 
Steve Lockhart with five, and the Polers lead by four. Steal by Wesker, and Lockhart hits again. Just like that, it's a six-point North lead. Javier Collins for the lead. Nice teamwork for the big men, but the cadets are careless with the ball after they get the rebounds. With the big guys like that, you got to hold it up high so the shorter North Polars can't bat it away from it. Hey, one thing I've already learned about this match is you want to keep score. Don't look down. <laughs> Foul on the perimeter, and they'll get Knizel for a bump. I mean, both teams can take it back the other way so quickly. 4.20 in the first period on the Menard scoreboard. North leads by four. salons that always give you the phony treatment nice hair at great clip we promise to always serve you in a friendly courteous manner great clip guaranteed satisfaction guaranteed style at great clip if you're not 100 percent satisfied with your haircut we'll make it right guaranteed because at great clip our stylists stand behind every haircut great clip guaranteed satisfaction guaranteed style lead changes already in this game with North leading by four 420 to play in the first quarter Dick Kramer and Jeff Grayson glad you're with us for day two of the Boy State Basketball Tournament Elamine will put it in play for the Polars that's dropped back into a zone now Elamine from the outside and Taylor gets called for a Foul on the rebound. His first team's third. Good position by Iverson. Did not give any ground there. Taylor over the back. Nothing new here. Half of North's points have come off turnovers. That's their game. Well, up ahead on the break. The Canets get to Ross Iverson with a basket. And it's a two-point game. And that's game corrected. Nice job by the Cadets in transition. Crossover dribble and quick this time. Tips to the corner and the cadets will keep it down by four. I just said one dribble, boom, oh, he's gone. 325 left. While Matthew Lee has had a very good first period, Javier Collins has been relatively quiet. The cadets have not had him touch the ball much. Elamine Gamble. Now Rye sets up to put that offense. Now he gets the ball because he's double team. Taylor and Westbury are sandwiching him. Here's Washington on the break. And a whistle and a foul call on Matthew Lee. Here is Jabari Washington coming right at you. He's either getting a basket or a foul. That's his plan. Goes to the basket. Gets the foul. Goes to the line. Transition game by the Polars right there. Off the turnover. Down against the cadets, number 44, Rob Worthington. Rob Worthington in the game for the cadets. Washington with three points. Taylor with the rebound. 
Washington Drive, smothered by Lee, and he's got his second foul. Jabbar like that is much for the opportunity at the line. Is what you just said, two on one of the cadets' big guns. Free throw rebounds, you can't give those up. Got to put that ball away. It went right by Collins. He's that big, he's got to put that ball away and get the rebound. Lee with the body. Washington right back to the line. There's Mike Manning. Not smiling. Saying he's going to smile through the whole game. <laughs> he realizes he and his team have their work cut out for them. That's a very good team, but of course, defending champions, and they've only lost one game all year. That to the London Spicer. Largest lead from about seven points. Stepped out of bounds. He is so disruptive defensively. Sometimes you forget about that. On the Menard scoreboard, 248 left, and the Polars lead it. Cover your walls with quality glidden paint from Menard. You'll find a finish to suit any room. Spreadwall has a flat finish that's ideal for bedrooms and dining rooms. Just $7.44 a gallon. Spread low luster gives a low gloss look to kitchens and baths. Now $10.58. If there's a special color you'd like, Glidden's color matching computer will get the color you want. Menards has you covered with Glidden paint. Save big money at Menards. The Thompsons got their home equity installment loan from First Bank. Not just because they could finance their car and deduct the interest, or get convenient ways to manage their money, or pay for the new addition to their home. They chose First Bank because the bank loaned them 100% of the equity in their home, which let them consolidate their finances and their family all at once. For special rates and no closing costs, apply by phone today. North with the lead late in the first quarter. Talking to a number of people this morning and early this afternoon who saw North play last night, and I asked for their observations, and they said they thought they might be a little bit more balanced than they were last year. And a very unselfish team, a great passing team. Here is Kneisel. Long rebound goes to Collins. Lee zipping it underneath for two. Rob Worthington gets the basket. That's the hustle they need. Good hustle by Collins to get that second shot opportunity. Lee changes Elamine's shot to force the miss. Worthington nearly lost it to Westbrook. First period fouls. 2.10 left in the first quarter. So a zone. So we got 3 2 zone now. Westbury in the corner. from 15. Rebounded by Worthington. And it's stripped away by Westbury, but picked up by Rye. Now reaching foul on Westbury. He's active. He's already made a few steals with that time. Got the arm on the foul. But he's everywhere. I have to be worried about him right after a rebound. That's when he makes the steal. Robin Ingram says Westbury's his best defensive player. He was Westbury was the only North starter last night who did not score in double figures, and he finished with seven points. Knows something about contact with defense. Play football, star football player, too. Good all-around athlete, and he shows it when he's on defense, especially. Worthington drives too strong. Collins with the putback, and he's foul. Jabbar Washington whistled for the foul. 
Al Jabbar smiling more than Mike Manning right now, but I'm looking for the cadets to get it inside the Collins. Easier said than done on the double team, but he's one of, he's one of your, your main guys. I'd like for him to be more active here on offense. Collins took control of the game in the overtime session yesterday against Duluth East. Collins now with three points, 24 points and 10 rebounds in the game last night. Jabbar Washington sits with two fouls. Two makes for Javier Collins. Andre Gray replacing Jabbar Washington in the lineup. Less than a minute to play. a tough to shoot from the outside. Matthew Lee, Lee makes it tough to shoot on the inside. Nice job by the Fallers to work it around to, to Taylor, but Lee swats it away and he'll get a breather to end the first quarter. on the Lincoln Mercury dealer scoreboard. Nestle camera exchange is having an inventory clearance sale. As you might have guessed, we're seeing some moving rather quickly around here. We have hundreds of items that are marked down in all departments. SLR and point and shoot cameras, binoculars, GME, camcorders and VCRs, and TVs, including big screens. You'll find great bargains on closeouts and demos. National Canvas Inventory Clearance Sale. We're just glad we're not in a used car business. Good heavens! Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. To make the new Plymouth Grand Voyager even more versatile, they simply went back to the drawing board. And voila, a driver's side sliding door was born. Now it's twice as easy to get into. Twice as easy to get out of. Twice as easy to load. Twice as easy to unload. Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. Dick Bramer and Jeff Grayson bringing you game two of the quarterfinal round here. St. Thomas Academy behind by six points. And the Polars start the second quarter with a basketball. And I don't think that's that bad for the cadets. The North played well. Holland Elamine finding Taylor. The ball comes back to Elamine and he scores a dozen for Holland Elamine. That's amazing. He's 5'10 and he's playing like a big guy in the paint the way he uses his body. Westbury nearly stole it. Stepped on the sideline. for three. He's got nine points for the cadets. The big guy with some range out there. Just three for eight from the field in yesterday's game and one for seven from the line. going to do that's going to open up the quickness he has on his drives even more because someone's got to get a hand up there at least to try to make it and make a miss Elamine committing his first foul 
He is so much better of an offensive player now than he was a year ago, and he's got a, another year to go. Collins gets the loose ball in the follow-up. Collins has six points. Westbury trying to jam it in, tipped by Lee. Over to Iverson. Telegraphed it a little bit. Lee with the, the reaching to get it. That's the first North turnover. Another three. This one a little bit long for Lee. Elamine breaking it in. One on two, and he scores. Is he putting on a show in this first half? He's doing it all different ways, too. 17 points for Colin Elamine. And we've only played 10 minutes. Lee missed the three-pointer, the long rebound. That's going to open up transition. Lockhart short. Rebounded by Ryan. covering Javier Collins, using the strength of his body to take Collins out of the play there. They wanted to go to him inside, and Taylor wouldn't have it. Taylor in the lane, a couple of pump fakes, and a foul on Collins. First foul on Javier Collins. Mike Manning, I think, as you said at the end of the first quarter, he has to grin and bear it a little bit here. His team is playing pretty well, but Khaled El Amin is simply the best player on the floor right now, and he is showing it. Off of missed shots, North goes in transition. Off of made shots, El Amin hits threes. Derek Taylor with two free throws. Transfer from Minneapolis South. Given Robin Ingram big boost this year as the Polars try to win back-to-back -back state champions championships. Javier Collins coming out of the game. Looks like he's got a cramp. It's, it's nice for Robin Ingram to have him on the front line plus Jabbar Washington. Can let Jabbar go free a little bit on offense. A very good start for Minneapolis North on the Clarity scoreboard. Guess what? When you buy Frontier Grass Herbicide and Banzo, you'll get cash back on both. Or buy Frontier and Clarity, cash back on both. Or buy Frontier and Marksman, you guessed it. It's called Cash Partners from Sandoz. Just buy Frontier and get $12 back when it's paired with Banzo or Clarity. $2.50 with Marksman. That makes our Cash Partners rewards even bigger than before. Superior performance and more cash back. Why you'd pass up this deal is anyone's guess. If your life is full of demands, get the vehicle that meets them best. Safari from GMC. With the most towing and cargo capacity in its class, it's the only way to get your show on the road. Get the ultimate in family van. Get a Safari. GMC is a proud television broadcast sponsor of the Minnesota State High School Tournament. Polars don't have anyone who can match up with Javier Collins' size, but they can uh, deny him the ball with numbers. Right there, Carrick Taylor. Watch number 52, keeping him away. And then the swat by El Amin. We mentioned he's listed at 5'10", and he often plays bigger than that. Javier having a hard time right now. Polish say someone else beat it. They pretty much got him in a triangle the entire time the cadets have the ball. This is Kanizel. Rebounded by Elamine. Smart strategy, too. Three more? Yep. I'm running out of space on the first half side of my scoreboard here already for Elamine. Four threes, four twos. 20 points. Washington with the rebound, stolen by Kaniza. In the lane, pulled out of there by Iverson. Now Rye for three. Oh, good. Bar Washington lost the rebound to Kaniza. Washington got it back and went out of bounds, and the cadets will get it. 
get another shot at it right now. They're just gunning threes. Javier Collins back in the ball game for the Cadets. Tipped out of bounds by Andre Gray. They're having a hard time getting an inbounds inside like the Cadets want. Picks up the rebound. Down by 10. The cadets have to be careful here in the last 345. Collins can't handle a pass, and it goes out of bounds to the bowlers. Eight cadet turnovers in the first half. Good thought there as William Collins played the two-man game. I don't know if there was a little too much on that one for Collins to handle. The thought was there, but no points. the shot and he blows by him you have to commit a foul Iverson picking up the foul his first and the fifth foul on the cadets that's where you need help defense someone to bail you out because he is so quick you know I mean so quick on those drives Washington has it slapped out of his hands stays with it shot blocked and Collins rips it out of the air floor. Penizel for three. Big basket for the Cadets. Eight points for Paul Penizel. They kind of stuck there for a while. That's one they had to have. Gray steps inside the arc. Too hard. Rebounded by Penizel. Penizel for three more. Yeah. Mike Manning has said he's the best shooter he's ever coached. He's got 11 points in the half, nine of them on three-point baskets. Isn't it amazing how the three ball can change? Yeah. Quickly, snap of a finger, four-point game. Yesterday, the Cadets blew an 18-point lead in large part because of the three-point shot. John Osterlin of Duluth East shot the Greyhounds right back into the game after they were down by 18. Well, now the Cadets hope to benefit from the three-point shot. Within striking distance, need a good defensive stop here. The big guys have to start playing big in the paint. Lockhart takes the three. Rebounded by Rye. Up ahead, Collins lays it in. Great lead pass. And it's a two-point game. Rye with a lead pass, as you mentioned, right in stride. And Collins, the big man, runs the floor. Washington under the glass misses. Rebounded by Iverson. Nice position by Rye to take Taylor out of position there on the rebound. It's an eight-point run for the Cadets. Thrown away. Iverson looking inside. He threw it right to Washington. And a foul on the play. Mike Manning wanting a, wanted a traveling call. Instead, it's a cadet foul on Rye. Washington on the run. Doing a nice job of drawing those fouls. Not scoring too many points today, but he's getting to the line a share of time. Make one bad pass, North's on the run. That's kind of stopped the cadets run here a little bit. A few moments ago, the Polars had a 10-point lead. Now it's just two. Washington at the line for two. He's three of five from the free throw line and a half. Well, 
left in the half. North by three. Keith and Stephanie Brennan each opened a portfolio IRA, not just because it combines various accounts into one plan, but one easy to read statement. They open portfolio IRAs because they can include a wide range of options from both First Bank and SBS Investment Services, which gives them the flexibility to go in whatever direction they ultimately decide to go. Spring with savings at Menard. Create a new look with carpeting from surfaces. Palmetto is great for high traffic areas, including steps and decks. Now just $5.59 a square yard. Give your walls a new look for spring with Berkeley and Borden wallpaper. Save on many beautiful patterns starting at just $5.92 a double roll. Unroll the beauty of Berkeley and Borden at Menard. Save big money at Menard. Minneapolis North leading by three. They've led by as many as ten in this half. The cadets will get the basketball. They have shot themselves back into the game. Thanks to Paul Kneisel. Some good possessions for the cadets. One of the biggest guys on the floor, Javier Collins, finishing a breaker. Content to take the final shot of the half. North five of ten from three-point range. St. Thomas four of nine. The difference in the game is that odd three-pointer that North has put in. Kyle Delamine has four of them and 20 first-half points. This isn't a bad thought if they execute the thought, but. St. Thomas has had a few times around the free throw line where they've tried to throw the ball into the lane and it's been easily stolen. The play starts with 20 seconds left. of the second quarter bringing St. Thomas Academy right back into the game. It's 35-32 after the first half. Good comeback by the cadets as you said. A three ball bringing them back. I think Mike Manning has got to be happy right now. Let's go to Andy Scoopman. Okay Dick, thank you very much. I'm with Mike Manning, St. Thomas head coach. Down by 10, cut it to three. Your thoughts on the first half? Well, it's a, it's a good first half for us. We came out and executed a game plan to about 70% of what we want to do. We still need to be better and much patient in terms of that offensive end. When we can get into our offensive set, we're pretty strong. There's a lot of times where we just tried to run, and we need to hesitate from doing that and get into our offensive sets and hopefully on the defensive end continue the kind of game plan we have right now. What's the strategy on stopping Khaled Elamine? Well, there's no stopping Khaled. So we, he's just too great of a player. So we're going to give him what he normally takes. But we're going to try to stop the other four, and uh, especially concentrating on Ozzy Lockhart, who's a phenomenal outside shooter, try to get disrupt his rhythm, and then we're going to try to leave some of the other players alone just so we can concentrate on Kyle's penetration. Mike, good luck in the second half. Andy. All right, let's go now to Janet Carvinen for the other side of the story. Janet? Thanks, Andy. I'm here with Robin Ingram, the head coach of Minneapolis North, and a uh, big half for Kyle El Amin, but what are your thoughts for your team at this point? Uh, basically, we're being out hustled right now. I, I think St. Thomas has beaten us down the floor. They got about four real easy buckets, like in that first quarter. And we're, we're going to have to do a good job of getting back on defense a little faster. We're, we're also giving up a lot of outside perimeter shots. I think they knocked down maybe two trays in a row at the end of the second quarter. And we're going to have to take away that shot also. Well, you're... I'm sure you face a lot of teams that are taller than you. I think your team plays a lot bigger than they are, but is the size of uh, St. Thomas Academy a concern for you? Uh, it, it's a real concern right now. I, I think their smallest starters maybe 6'3", and, and what they're able to do right now is they're, they're shooting the ball over the top of us, and, that, and that's hurting us quite a bit right now. As far as 
what whether Khaled is leading the floor or scoring, does it matter to you in this whole context of things? Or I mean, he, he definitely can take charge of a game. Uh, if we're going to win today, he's going to have to have one of his better games today because some of the other guys are having trouble on offense, and I think Khaled's going to have to carry that extra load for us. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Okay, you're welcome. All right, that's Robin Ingram. Let's go back over to the table. All right, it's not the best seat in the house, but way up there someplace, there's the GMC Viking Land Cam. It's 35-32, Minneapolis North. Over St. Thomas Academy, the winner takes on Staples Motley tomorrow night in the semis, and we'll return with more from the Civic Center in a moment. If you have children involved in sports, there's only one eyeglass lens they should be wearing, the polycarbonate lens. Look what happens to a standard plastic lens when struck by a projectile. Compare this to a polycarbonate lens. Notice the projectile simply bounced off the polycarbonate lens without breaking it. Be safe and choose polycarbonate lenses for your all-star player. Vision World, Minnesota's locally owned optical company. After one half of football, San Francisco leads New York 540 to 310. In the future, it won't be just how hard you play, but how good your sports drink works. With a third more carbs than Gatorade and B vitamins to unlock carbohydrate energy, all sport is not just a thirst quencher. It's a body quencher. Isn't that new 300-pound ball? Yeah, here you go. Menards has the right products for your home. Save on our entire selection of door and window hardware from right products. Door closers are just $3.98. Storm and screen knob latches only $4.49. Get the best lock for your money with Harlock. All styles are on sale now, including passage lock sets with bright brass finish, now just $5.98. Find the best for your doors at Menard. Save big money at Menard. This is a Minnesota 9 News Update. Good afternoon, I'm Lori Aoki. It's the news residents of Wyoiga, Wisconsin have been waiting for. Local officials say the evacuees may be able to return home for good tomorrow after crews finish repairing a leak in the city's water system. A train derailment forced an evacuation three weeks ago. A similar story in Oklahoma, 1,500 people have been evacuated following a train derailment near the town of Lata. Two tank cars carrying an alcohol caught fire, sending flames at least 100 feet in the air. General Motors brake makers are putting the brakes on their two-week-old walkout. The automaker announced the settlement ending the 17-day strike. Union members still have to vote on the deal, but workers could be back on the job tomorrow afternoon. And heavy snow and strong winds made the first day of spring feel a lot like winter in parts of the Midwest. 15 inches of snow closed schools and knocked out power in Indiana. Joel will have details on our own weather later tonight. Back to the game. Tuesday on UPN, Brandy is Moesha, a teenager who really knows how to work it. That's right. And speaking of working, when Mo and Kim get their first job, <laughs> someone's going to get their feathers ruffled because it's Moesha who wants to work. I could write you up. Uh, and Kim, who's hardly working. Y'all should have thought about that before y'all hired me. Moesha. Tuesday at 7 on UPN 9. I have 21 horses to look after and over 25 snow-covered acres to take care of. Michelle Schuler runs a boarding stable, and she couldn't go a day without her Chevy Blazer. A lot of people trust me with their horses. I trust a Chevy Blazer, and it's been a real asset around here. Right now, lease a Chevy Blazer for only $2.99 a month for 30 months. A Blazer for $2.99 a month just makes good horse sense. It's easy to see why Blazer puts the competition out to pasture. The Chevy Truck 100,000 Mile Club. Only at your Heartland Chevrolet Geo dealer. Over time, things have changed around here. Some got bigger, some got better, but some got it right, right from the start. Like Banvel. After all this time, it's still the broadleaf herbicide for corn. Still the one that lasts from spike to canopy. Sure things change. Banvel just hasn't needed to. Banvel, now more than ever, it's still the best. Introducing Descent 2. Ten new weapons, 30 new levels. Afterburner speed doubler. One wrong move, and you're dog meat. Descent 2 for PC. You're going down. 
<laughs> Descent 2 for PC. 10 new weapons, 30 new levels, afterburner speed doubler. Here's the story of an angry lady. Descent 2 for PC. You're going down. We are here at halftime at St. Paul Civic Center. Janet Carvin is a very special guest. Winning coach of the first game today, uh, Staples Motley coach Lynn Peterson. Congratulations on your win over Ricori today. How does it feel to defeat a double-A team? Well, it feels good to win any game down here, and we didn't really build it up as a A versus double-A. We built it up as a, a game that we needed to go out and play very well and move on, and that's kind of how we approached it. Well, you've had almost an easy time of it, just taking care of the likes of Morris and, and everything else in the tournament. Um, what do you credit that to so far? You know, you lost Blaine Yeager from last year, but you rebuilt with even a better team, it seems like. Well, I think for one thing, probably our kids, even though we're young, they have a lot of experience. We've had a schedule this year that's been pretty demanding. We've been, we've been down before. Uh, we've played against some good teams. But I think the bottom line is the kids have executed very well, and they're playing well at crunch time. They really did today. Uh, obviously, you had a big inside game from uh, Higher and Otteson. Has the inside game been a focus for you? Do you like to start out getting those points in the paint right away? Well, we like to start out whatever a team gives us, but I think any coach will tell you inside, outside. And we tried to stress that a little bit more today, that Danny and Chris, you've got to post up strong. You guys have to want the ball in there because we felt there was going to be some focus on Eric Kelly on the outside. And we just said, you guys have to do some damage in there. Kelly is such a leader, though, and makes such great decisions on the floor. It must be like having another coach out there. Well, yeah, it is. And he does a, I mean, he does a great job, and, but he's been playing forever. I mean, he, does, he has a lot of experience, but he's a very heady kid and, and kind of can get into the flow of a game, knows what we want. And uh, like you said, it just takes a lot of pressure off of us and off a lot of the other kids. Now, a lot of people talking, of course, about a possible rematch if Minneapolis North does emerge victorious today. They have to do their job in the second half first, but uh, you lost them in a very close game in the state championship last year in the Sweet 16. Um, your player, Matt Heyer, said after the game that he'd love to have a chance to have a rematch. Any feelings from you on that? Well, the only thing, like I told the kids, we're going to have one of these teams. You know, and if it's, if it's St. Thomas Academy, they are a better team, at least today. If it's Minneapolis North, they are the better team, at least today. But I said, you know, it doesn't make any difference. I think as a coach, you've got to be able to feel, like I tell the kids, they said, here goes old Mr. Stupid again, you know, thinking you can go and beat everybody, you know. And, but I do, I feel that we can go out and play with anybody. And uh, again, again, I, I think if, if I don't feel that way, and honestly feel that way, the kids are going to know that. But, uh, you know, if you really feel that you can, I mean, we got to go out and prove it. Now, maybe we can beat them by 20, maybe they'll drill us by 20, or maybe it'll be a close game, but I think you got to have the feeling that you can do it. And I think we have that feeling we can play with anyone. Well, it certainly looked like it today. Obviously, last year you had a big win over Lakeville and AA school also. The Sweet 16 format, mixing it up with Class A and AA, hasn't really slowed you down in terms of uh, your team's successes and everything. Uh, obviously, we're going to go to a four-class system next year, so it's may not even be worth talking about, but have, how have you enjoyed it being the Class A coach that has done well in this tournament? Well, our Sweet 16 has been very, very good to us, you know, and probably primarily because our kids have played very well, but, uh, um, you know, one of the biggest drawbacks, which I think is just terrible, is, is no game for first-round losers. I think, that's, I think that's really too sad, but, but for the rest of it, I feel that, you know, if we're in this position that we've won one game or whether we've won two, you have to believe again like i said earlier that you can go play with anybody and if you can you know if you don't feel that way then you probably shouldn't you know state tournament should be something that you earn and uh so obviously we were the class a school that benefited the most out of the sweet 16 so i can't i can't speak for other people it's been very good for us but i certainly sympathize with first round losers Coach, so, thanks so much for your time today, and good luck tomorrow in the semifinals. Thanks a lot, Janet. Lynn Peterson, Staples Motley, they will face the winner of this next game in the second half. We'll be back at the Civic Center right after this. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Game time coverage of the Minnesota State Basketball Tournaments is brought to you in part by Dairy Queen, Great Clips, and your Heartland Chevrolet Geo Dealers. Harshest winter in years is almost over, so crawl out from under your electric blanket because the Toyota Spring Rush is on. If you rush into your Toyota dealer, you can see tough new trucks like the Tacoma 4x4. Even save 2,000 big ones in value package savings on a T100, or lease a Tacoma 4x2 for a mere 149 a month. But hurry. These offers wait for no one. Tail kicking trucks and values to match. Wow. What a rush. Hi, I'm Sarah Rood from Eden Prairie High School. And I'm Mike Seminari from Jefferson High School. We're the AAA award winners for Region 6 AA. The state high school tournament continues here on UPN 9. Welcome back to the St. Paul Civic Center, Minneapolis North, leading St. Thomas Academy 35-32. Thought it was interesting listening to Mike Manning as he was heading to the locker room uh, at halftime, talking about how he wants to focus on the other guys, principally Ozzie Lockhart, to try to hold them down. He'll let Khaled Elamin do what he can, although I don't think he wants them to have two 20-point halves, but uh, certainly they were trying to take the ball away from some of the other options for North, Jabbar Washington, people like that. Despite all that, Ozzie Lockhart got seven points in the first half. Yeah, he came out firing, too. Khalid's putting on a show, but it's still a three-point game. But the other guys, like you mentioned, here's Ozzie for three. Sure. Lockhart hitting one, three, a couple of other field goals. Nice sequence here for Lockhart, back-to-back -back field goals, seven points. But without a doubt, the most exciting player in the tournament is number 42, and he'll wear the polar blue and 20 first-half points. I have a feeling there might be a college coach or two in town this weekend who uh, might be interested in Khaled el -Amin when he graduates next year. Great performance inside there, going up against the bigger players and also outside. And this is what keys the run for St. Thomas. Their outside shooting, uh, Paul Kneisel hits one from long range. He had three threes, 11 points in the half for Paul Kneisel. And he got the cadets back within one. Nice play here up ahead for Javier Collins, who had eight points. Good start and finish. Collins runs the floor well for a big man and a nice pass by Rye. The pass started the break there. Lee, Collins, and Kneisel have done almost all the scoring for St. Thomas Academy. They've scored 28 of their 32 points. We think we're going to have a great second half, and we'll be back with it in just a moment. <laughs> After one half of football, San Francisco leads New York 540 to 310. In the future, it won't be just how hard you play, but how good your sports drink works. With a third more carbs than Gatorade and B vitamins to unlock carbohydrate energy. All sport is not just a thirst quencher. It's a body quencher. Isn't that new 300 pound ball? Yeah, here you go. The Thompsons got their home equity installment loan from First Bank. Not just because they could finance their car and deduct the interest, or get convenient ways to manage their money, or pay for the new addition to their home. They chose First Bank because the bank loaned them 100% of the equity in their home, which let them consolidate their finances and their family all at once. For special rates and no closing costs, apply by phone today. Civic Center, and here's what the first half looked like. St. Thomas Academy, 59% from the field. They out-rebounded North. But look at the turnovers, 10 to 1, and that was a big, big factor in that first half. It's pretty amazing when you can shoot 59% and you're still down by three, but North 
getting more shots. They're more active inside on the rebound. And you're right, the turnovers, that is the story right now because that's how the Polars thrive on offense, taking advantage of the other team's mistakes. And shooting well is nothing new for St. Thomas Academy. They shot 60% from the field on the year. They like to get the ball inside to Collins and Lee. They did that in the first half. Knizel shot well from the outside. Matthew Lee had it going pretty well. He got nine early points, then ran into a bit of foul trouble. Both teams start the second half with the first half starters. And the cadets start the second half with the basketball. A game of spurts in that first half. I'm curious to see who comes out first here. A little more zip. Alley up for Matthew Lee. Javier Collins to Matthew Lee. And the cadets start the second half with a dramatic two-pointer. I said heck some zip. Wow. That wakes this place up a little bit. Stolen away by Ross Iverson, and the Cadets have a chance to take the lead. Canizo, a little long, rebounded by Lockhart. Khaled Elamine, 23 points. He hit his first shot of the second half like he never took a timeout for halftime. Wow. <laughs> oh. Two great plays, one from the outside, one inside here in this Third quarter. Khaled makes you pay one way or the other, doesn't he? Lee, diagonal pass across. Iverson has a rattle out. Rebounded by Westbury, and he's fouled by Iverson. Well, Collins fed Lee on that alley-oop. I'm still impressed by the way North is keeping Javier out of the offense. Yep. That time it, it was Iverson who went inside on the drive. I think the Polar said that's fine as long as it's not Collins. Washington looked inside for Taylor. Nobody there. Nobody open anyway. Elamina is 9 of 15 from the field. He's hit five three-pointers. Misses. Rebounded by Iverson. Up ahead, Matthew Lee gets it to curl in. 13 for Matthew Lee, and it's a two-point game. I'm impressed by uh, the two biggest guys on the floor, Lee and Collins, on the floor. Oh, it was 26 for Collin Elamine. I'm trying to make my comments quick because he's about to watch one. <laughs> Said he was struggling with his shot in the first half yesterday. Probably didn't have time to take any shooting practice. But he is having himself a phenomenal game here this afternoon. They get it inside to Lee and a foul is called. And it's on Khaled Elamin, his second. What's great about this, Jeff, is it's, it's been difficult or, or disappointing the last couple of years. Minnesota's best high school player has never been in this forum. Sam Jacobson never made it here. But to see this player and to allow the whole state to see Khaled Elamin, even though he's just a junior, it's great for the tournament. A great showcase for him. Lee getting the free throw. You're right, basketball benefits. Three more, he's in his first three point, first three three point baskets of the second half. You know that zone? He's there, he's in the zone. Lee with a can opener that rolls out. And Taylor gets the rebound. 29 points for Khaled Elamine. Lockhart, Lee rebound. Canizo on the break for Lee. Cadets need a good possession here to slow things down like Mike Manning talked about at halftime. Came on Westbury with a good defensive play and it goes out of bounds to the Polars. 
521 left in the third on the first bank scoreboard. It's Khaled El Amin, 29. St. Thomas Academy, 37. Has amazing savings for all your spring projects. Get your lawn and garden in shape with tillers from Weed Eater. This garden tiller is $249. A rear time tiller, $479. Keep your car or truck running strong with Quaker State Motor Oil. A case is $7.08 after rebate. That's just 59 cents per quart. Stock up on spring savings at Menard. Save big money at Menard. You may never see these numbers again. Four, eight financing or 2,000 cash back. The great percent event is coming to an end, so get a great deal while you can. Like four, eight financing for 48 months or 600 cash back on Ford Taurus, Ranger, Contour, and Probe. Four, eight financing or 1,000 cash back on the three-door Escort or Windstar. And up to 2,000 cash back on Bronco. You may never see these numbers again. Four, eight financing or 2,000 cash back. So get them while you can. Get to your Northland Ford dealer today. 521 left in the third quarter. And Khaled, excuse me, going through puberty at age 40 is a really unpleasant <laughs> thing. Khaled El Amin is putting on quite a show. Seven of nine from three-point range. He's feeling it. He's such a complete player, too. I think that's that's probably what's most impressive about him. We're talking about his outside shooting. He started this game with some great drives, one we just took a look at during the halftime highlights. Oh, yeah. He's also the leader of this team. Not just in scoring. Trying to get it inside to Taylor. The ball tipped to Javier Collins. Seven-point game. Tip away from Collins out of bounds. Again, Taylor fronting him. Westbury playing good weak side help defense. Nearly stolen by Collin Elamine. Knocked out of bounds. And Elamine. <laughs> uh, is he on the north uh, track team in the spring doing the hurdles? <laughs> Maybe he should be. You know, he loves to play football, too. All over the floor. This team always played good defense. And Elamine and Taylor right now, two good examples of it. Lee lobbed it for Collins. And it eventually comes back to Collins from Lee for two more. Ten points for Javier Collins. Cadets needed that one. A miss for Collins Elamine. He's now 7 of 10. And he uh, pats his chest on his way back up the floor saying, that was my fault. This guy misses one shot and he wants to take the blame for it. Loose <laughs> ball picked up by Elamine and a foul on Kaneiser. His second. They cannot be lax with the basketball. You have to protect that thing as if it's, as if it's a, a child almost because of the way the bowlers are so active defensively. Jamar Washington spins, and the shot was blocked, or he tried to find a teammate on the baseline. Collins ended up with the ball. Iverson to Lee. Kneisel. Lost it on the way up, and there's a foul called, I believe, an Andre Gray. I think Kneisel got a break there. It looks like he's about to force something, but draws the foul. The foul is on Gray in the ball game for Ozzy Lockhart. Well, still just a five-point game right now. In the strike A dozen now for Kaiser. Robin Ingram and Ozzy Lockhart. Cadets draw within three again. With a three-point north lead at the half. 35-32. Everybody will get a bit of a rest here as the bowlers bring the ball out. Elamine <laughs> is 
he walked past Iverson. Iverson had his hand out in good defensive position, and Colladell means gave him five. <laughs> Ago than a month ago. Taylor for 15. Jordan rebounded by Collins. So a month ago, the game became a chore for Colin El Amin. But he's having fun here this afternoon. Westbury with the steal. El Amin. Alley -oop for Washington. Eight for Jabbar Washington. And he's having fun now. Oh, is he having fun? What a feat. Pass tip. Elamine has it. Here we go again. Stop and go, and he draws the foul. He got Tanizel up in the air, drew the foul. He's everywhere. You mentioned he's having fun in this tournament. He should be having fun. He's a high school junior at the state tournament. You see him playing with enthusiasm, and he draws the foul here. And that feed earlier looked so effortless, but it was right where it had to be for Washington to slam it home. And that's teamwork, too. Elamine going over to the north bench. Robin Ingram has a word or two for the junior. Two free throws for Elamine. 29 points. This is his first free throw of the game. So much has been made this week of the things going on in college personal life. The hope was that it wouldn't be a distraction for him or his team. It certainly has not been the case so far. For those of you who don't know, it was discovered, I guess, this week that Elamine got married a couple weeks ago. Goes in for the shot, but it's blocked. Collins with the ball for the cadets. Sorry, they threw it all. I was going to say, he seems to 